efficient weapon systems for combating submarines have high priority in all navies. The anti-submarine rocket belongs to a weapon system for anti-submarine warfare which consists of three main parts. Firstly, sonar equipment which according to the ECHO principle locates the submarine and indicates its bearing, range and depth. Secondly, a computer which converts these values into firing data for the weapon. The weapon is the third link and its purpose is to convey a bursting charge which detonates in the immediate vicinity of the submarine. These three links form the weapon system. The efficiency of the weapon system depends upon, among other things, how much time is required from the moment the submarine is located until the effect of the weapon is obtained. During this period, the submarine is usually free to maneuver and can thus be anywhere within a wide area, the size of which is determined by the time lag within the weapon system. If the time is short, the probability of hitting when a given number of bursting charges are used naturally increases. Because of the high speed of the anti-submarine rocket, even in the water trajectory, the time lag will be short. For a target at a distance of 2,000 meters, at a depth of 200 meters, the total time required for the rocket to reach the target is 34 seconds, corresponding to an average speed of more than 110 knots straight through the water. This film is mainly concerned with the rocket, with its fuse, the launcher, hoists and ammunition compartments. The shape of the rocket and its weight distribution give very good ballistic properties. The total weight of the rocket is 250 kilograms. The bursting charge consists of 100 kilograms of TNT or 107 kilograms of hexatonal. In the rear part of the rocket, the motor is housed. It consists of a combustion chamber with nozzle. Three different types of rocket motors give three alternative ranges. The Mark 50, which has a velocity of 70 meters per second with only the outer motor and 90 meters per second with both motors. Within the elevation limits of 18 and 45 degrees, the Mark 50 covers this water area longitudinally. The outer motor of the Erika gives a velocity of 100 meters per second and when the inner motor is also used, the velocity is 130 meters per second. The area covered is somewhat more than 1,600 meters. The Flora has only one rocket motor, which gives a maximum velocity of 153 meters per second 
and a maximum range of 2,200 meters. The launchers, hoists and other equipment fit all three types of rockets. A change can thus be made from one alternative to another without encountering any difficulties. The rocket motor uses a solid fuel propellant which is ignited by a priming charge. The rocket can be equipped with either a time fuse or a proximity fuse. The time fuse initiates the bursting charge at a predetermined time after the impact against the water surface, while the proximity fuse sets off the bursting charge when an underwater target is within a certain distance from its transmitter receiver. The time fuse is a mechanical electrical device with an extraordinary precision which is set by means of a built-in servo and adjustments of the timing can thus be carried on until the instant of firing. An arming clockwork which is started automatically when the rocket is fired prevents the detonator from moving into the armed position until the rocket has traveled 150 meters in its air trajectory. On impact against the water surface, a mechanism is released which in turn starts the two timing clockworks. There is a high speed clockwork for the first part of the water trajectory where the speed of the rocket is greatest and therefore requires very high timing precision. If the timing is more than two seconds, the low speed clockwork takes over the initiation of the bursting charge which is affected pyrotechnically. If the rocket should hit the submarine before then, the impact device will function. Should the rocket go to the bottom of the sea as a dud, the exploder is moved to the safety position by the arming clockwork. The proximity fuse consists of a transmitter receiver for ultra short waves. On firing, an ampoule battery, which comprises the power supply, is activated and on impact against the water surface. The protective cap of the oscillator is thrown off and the oscillator is pressed out by springs to its active position. During the first and rapid part of the water trajectory, the noise level is too high for efficient use of the proximity fuse. A mechanical device for initiating the bursting charge within this range is therefore built into the proximity fuse. The proximity fuse continuously transmits ultrasonic pulses. When echoes of a sufficient volume and quantity are returned to the receiver, the detonation takes place. The launcher has four tubes. The field of traverse depends upon where the launcher is located, but it can comprise a maximum of 340 degrees. It is equipped with the Bofors standardized electrohydraulic laying machinery for remote control. Since the SR-375 is a precision weapon, the requirements for the laying machinery are very exacting. High aiming velocity and high acceleration must be combined with great precision and good functioning certainty. The aiming properties of every launcher are therefore carefully inspected under various extreme conditions. Standardized hoisting devices with eight round revolving magazines have been designed to fit in different types of ships. For the operation of the launcher, when loading for instance, a control panel is provided which is usually located below deck adjacent to the launcher. The loading is started by setting the elevation switch of the control panel in position loading. The launcher is then elevated to 90 degrees. After that, the launcher is trained so that tube one comes in line with the hoist drum. The hoist motor is started. The rocket is now hoisted straight up into the launching tube where it's held in position by automatic catches.
Indicator lamps on the control panel show when the hoisting is completed and the loading switch can then be set for tube two, which now in turn moves to a position directly over the hoist drum and is loaded. This is repeated until all the launching tubes have been loaded. In the meantime, the personnel in the magazines have begun to reload the revolving magazine. The Bofors anti-submarine weapon SR-375 is a modern scientifically designed weapon which has been developed to fulfill today's tactical requirements. It has been introduced in several navies. SR-375 is characterized by good range, high precision, and outstanding reliability. <laughs> 